Hello everybody and welcome again to another science video lesson and in this video lesson we are going to talk about a brand new topic in physics called optics. Optics is the application of the electromagnetic wave that we have discussed in the previous video lesson. So come join me today as we discover what are the things that we will going to talk about here in the topic called optics. <music> Alright, so welcome to our uh, video lesson for this uh, session. So, optics. This is the brand new topic here that we will going to discuss this uh, session. And this is the application of electromagnetic wave that we have discussed last time on our previous video lesson. So, if you want to watch it uh, again, just click the link above, of the, uh, above this video. So, the link is there. All right. So the link is there. Uh, the link is there. All right. So what is this optics? All right. What is this optics? Optics is a uh, very crucial part of uh, the discussion about the electromagnetic wave. It's because of one thing. This is uh, this is the study of how the electromagnetic waves behave in a certain materials. All right. So what are those uh, behavior? Okay. What are the possible or what are the, the behavior of these uh, light waves in a certain material? So let's try to find out. All right. So the first thing that uh, the things that we were going to uh, include in this video lesson are the following. Number one is reflection. And the second one is refraction. Then the third one are the two types of images. So we have the virtual and real images. What are their uh, respective differences? All right. So as we go over it one by one, so let's define first what is optics. As I've said earlier, optics is the branch of physics. This is a branch of physics that studies how uh, light behaves. Right, so it um, it tackles more about um, the behavior of light as it enters the material or as it bounces off certain material. So that is optics. It includes also the study of um, lenses, mirrors, prisms. All right, so that is optics. So in optics, we were going to explain much about how object is being magnified. All right, so in optics. Magnification is very important in optics because uh, in terms of magnification, we will uh, learn how light interacts in a certain uh, material like lenses and mirrors. All right. So magnification is very important here. All right. So in making diagrams here in optics, we will use uh, imaginary lines and arrow lines to be exact. So to represent this light rays. All right, so these light rays are very crucial in studying optics. Without these light rays, optics will be uh, impossible to study. Okay, so with the use of these light rays, we will try to show how light travels from one material to another or from a shiny surface and then it will bounce off how does it work. All right, with the use of light rays. So as you can see here, with the use of an arrow, as a uh, representation of light ray, we will be able to find out how uh, these light rays interact all right, with one another. All right, next one is a ray diagram. Ray diagram is very important in optics. Because of ray diagram, we can actually uh, sketch. All right? We can accurately sketch uh, any, uh, any light rays that interacts with a certain material. And we can show... All right, we can show using ray diagram how these light rays interact. And once they interact, how they form images and what kind of image that they form, what is the characteristic of the image that they form based on this interaction. So a ray diagram is very important. Okay, so next, next one is the, the curved surface of the magnifying glass bends light so that it appears much uh, of a larger time. So what we have right here is an example of lens. Okay, what we have right here is an example of lens. And as we all know, we uh, if you are familiar with magnifying glass, we be able to uh, enlarge some of the objects that are very, very small. All right, like example, we have here the thumb. If we put it on the lens that we have right here, <coughs> 
Excuse me for that. Alright, so if we put this thumb in the lens that we have right here, uh, it enlarges this uh, image. Alright, so that is typical. Alright, so the, the magnification that you have right here is typical on a curved surface of a certain material. Example here is the lens. Alright, so what is a lens? Lens is an optical device. So one of the things that we are going to study here in optics are the lenses. Alright, so this is uh, a device that use that is used to bend light. Alright, so these are the these are optical devices that use to bend light. So there are two ways that the lens can bend light. Number one is uh, by converging it. We call it converging lens. Alright, so these lenses makes the light as it passes through these lenses, it comes together at a certain point, like the one that you have here. Alright, so the, we have here the magnifying glass. And at a certain point, uh, at the certain point of this magnifying glass, all light rays come uh, together. In uh, uh, come, uh, they are uh, consolidated together in one point. All right, in one point. So that is the converging lens that you have right here. Next one is the diverging lens. So the diverging lens is opposite of the convergent one because instead of uh, making the light come together as one the diverging lens bends the light and then spread it all right spread it even further all right so that is the diverging lens and lenses are very important in uh, ophthalmology because of uh, pres prescription glasses all right the prescription glasses so what whatever kind or what whatever prescription glasses that you use it uses uh, an optical device called lenses all right so next one is mirrors all right another uh, device another optical device that we were going to use here in uh, optics is mirror so mirrors are used to reflect light and this allows us to see ourselves okay so these are the mirrors all right and prisms are optical devices that that can uh, make light change its direction all right so that is a prism and a prism is a solid piece of glass with uh, flat uh, polished uh, surfaces yeah all right so this is the prism this is the mirror and this is the converging lens and this is the diverging lens all right, so basically they have their own uh, specific application. All right, they are they have own uh, specific application in our daily lives. For example, the prism. All right, so the prism is used as spectrometer, uh, part of the spectrometer. All right, mirror. Mirror are very crucial part of telescopes. All right, not only telescope but also other uh, in other applications. All right, like in uh, dentistry, all right. So the mirror that the dentist used to um, to look on inside your mouth, all right. So that is a mirror. Okay. So another one in prescription glasses and telescopes, they use lenses that you have right here. All right. So that is these are the optical devices that we will go into. We will go into encounter here in optics. All right. So there are two ways. Alright, so there are two ways light behaves in a certain material. Alright, so we have here reflection and we have here the refraction. Remember, in our discussion about the properties of electromagnetic waves, since electromagnetic waves travel everywhere and anywhere, it might be that the electromagnetic, electromagnetic waves might be absorbed. There are ways that the electromagnetic waves can be absorbed. Then it can be transmitted right and it can be reflected all right so those are the three ways that uh, might happen to your electromagnetic waves so one of them or two of them rather is uh, reflection and refraction okay reflection happens when light bounces off a certain surface and refraction is uh, when the light bends when it crosses from one material to another okay so that is refraction so this is what happens when the light is being reflected and this is what happens when light is being uh, refracted so that's their difference okay all right so the first uh, thing that we were going to investigate first is what is reflection okay so typically the question that we will go to answer here how do we describe the reflection of light what are the things that we can uh, 
take note of okay when uh, a light is being reflected okay so the cer certain thing that we were going to do here is to calculate the angles of reflection okay calculate the angles of reflection in a single light ray all right so reflection the images that appears in the mirror because of how light is reflected to the mirror is based on reflection all right so there are two rays that are involved here all right in a reflection there are two rays so we have here the incident ray these are light that falls through the mirror all right that falls through the mirror so that is the incident ray the next one is the reflected ray reflected ray is the ones that bounces off the mirror okay it is represented here by an arrow so an incident ray represented by an arrow going to the uh, mirror okay and the reflected ray is represented by an arrow that is uh, reflected uh, through coming up through the mirror all right so that is the reflected so this is again the incident ray and this is the reflected ray so these two rays that you have right here is very essential in uh, reflecting the light rays itself okay because of these two rays that you have there is an image form that we have right here okay so without one of these rays uh, there will be no reflection okay that, is, that will be possible all right so there are two types of reflection so number one is specular reflection so when we talk about shiny surfaces okay when we talk about shiny surfaces it uh it does specular reflection the shiny surfaces because it allows the light to bounce off in a single direction all right it allows the light to bounce off in single direction and it looks like this Okay, so specular reflection is uh, can happen on any surfaces that are shiny and smooth. All right. Meanwhile, we have the second one, which is the diffuse reflection. This is the opposite. Now, if rap, if you have specular reflection on sh shiny surfaces, uh, diffuse reflection happens on uh, rough surfaces and it doesn't allow light to go in one direction it it happens that the light rays will be scattered in too many direction like the, the one that you have right here okay now because of this kind of reflection we will be able to see all right so we'll be able to see the details of a certain surface how rough it is what are the what are the imperfections that we can see on the surface because of this diffuse reflection all right so modern modern video cards modern uh, graphics card that is used in computer and uh, that we use in gaming all right uses this uh, reflection all right uses this idea about reflection to make the game experience more immersive okay for example the latest technology that we have right here is uh, today is the rtx or the ray tracing so because of this rtx technology that we have on our graphics card uh, the game the game environment is becoming more and more uh, realistic okay now what makes it more realistic because of this uh, idea about reflections all right so um, graphics card engineers or engineers that uh, makes these graphic cards uh, take note of these reflections all right they imitate these reflections in the environment so that when it comes in a game all right when they uh when they put this uh video cards or graphic cards in a, in a game it becomes more and more immersive all right so that is the application of this peculiar and the diffuse reflection that we have all right so let's go down to the idea of reflection what is law of reflection all right so let's take a look at it on the simulation all right suppose we have here a ray of light okay so we have here the ray of light and it will strike a glass all right which is uh, assume let's assume that it, it is a shiny surface all right so as it strike through the glass at a certain angle okay so that is uh hey there you go All right, so as you can see here, one light is being refracted. So that will, we were going to talk about that one earlier. So let's take a look at this uh, light over here. All right, so let's take a look at the light of uh, this light over here that we have. So as you can see, 
Okay, what is this law of reflection? Okay, as you can see, as I move this uh, source of light that you have right here, what happens to the... By the way, this is the incident ray. Alright, so this is the incident ray and this will be your reflected ray. Alright, so don't bother with this one for now. This is the refracted ray. So we will not, uh, we will deal, uh, deal with, we, we will deal with this one later. Alright, so as you can see guys, the, the, as we move the incident ray, the reflected ray follows the angle in which we move our incident ray. So, whatever angle the incident ray we have right here, whatever angle the incident ray that we have right here, it is the same as the angle with the reflected ray. So, basically, that is what the law of reflection is all about. Alright? So, that is what the law, law of reflection is all about. It means that, alright, it means that the angle, of ref, the angle of incidence, this one, the one, the one that you have right here, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Again, law of reflection states that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So, as, uh, as what you can see here. By the way, this is, uh, this is a simulation coming from uh, PHET um, simulation, interactive simulation. So, I'll put the link in the description below so you can download this uh, simulation from PHET. Alright. So, that is uh, the law of reflection. Okay. So, uh, let's go. Uh, let's have the idea about it. So, as we all know, the incident ray strikes the mirror and the reflected ray is the one that bounces off. So, typically, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. That is what the law of reflection is all about. Okay? Alright, so let's uh, have some sample calculation about uh, the law of reflection. Okay, example, we have a light ray which is incident on a plane mirror with 30 degree angle of incidence. Alright? That is the problem. Now, okay, so you can pause this video if you want to sketch it. Alright? So if you want to sketch it, so... What is the angle of reflection based on the problem? Alright, so what is the angle of reflection? Alright, so you can pause this video, then um, try to uh, think of the uh, answer. Alright, so the answer on this particular problem, so if we follow the law of reflection, the answer should be 30 degrees. Alright, so the angle of reflection should be 30 degrees. Why? It's because... The angle of incidence is 30 degrees, alright? So, the angle of incidence is 30 degrees. So, it means that the angle of refle reflection is also 30 degrees, alright? So, that is the law of reflection. So, don't forget to um, include the normal line as your base reference, alright? So, don't forget the normal line. So, the normal line is very, very important, alright? So, very important right here. Okay, so that is law of reflection. 30, then we have another 30 on the other side. Okay. Again, 30 from the normal line. Okay. Alright, so that was reflection. So, next one is refraction. Okay. So, we have now the refraction. So, what do we have here in refraction? Okay. Now, in reflection, the light bounces off. In refraction, the light uh, bends. So, we were going to describe what happens to the image, alright? What happens to the object, okay, if uh, the object refracts, okay? Or if the light refracts, okay? So, that's how, uh, that's the question that we were going to uh, answer here. Alright, next one is, uh, identify the materials that enables the light to bend at different speed. Okay, so what are those materials, alright, that uh, enables the light? Right. So from our video, uh, from our previous video lesson, the properties of light, we have encountered this word index of refraction. Okay. So we agreed on that particular uh, discussion that okay, we agreed on that particular video lesson that as the light passes through certain material, the speed of this light, all right, the speed of light decreases. Okay, as it passes through certain material, the more uh, the higher the index of refraction the slower the speed of light and the uh, lower the, the index of refraction, the higher the speed of light. Okay? So, the second one is, 
let's try to find out how total internal reflection happens. Okay? <coughs> Alright, so in refraction, when a light ray crosses from one material to another, okay, the amount it bends depends on the difference of the index of refraction between the two materials. Again, um, there should be two materials involved here. Alright? There should be two materials. And those two materials should be different in terms of index of refraction. Alright? Refraction will not happen. Refraction will not happen if the two materials have the same index of refraction. Alright? So take note of that one. The two materials should have different index of refraction to make refraction happens. Okay? So what we have right here is the refraction of light. Alright, in uh, diamond, right? So diamond is one of the material that has the largest uh, index of refraction. Okay, so we have right here on the other side, alright, on the right side we have the water, okay, which has 1.33 index of refraction. So as you can see here, the amount of angle that they bend depends on the index of refraction. Okay, so we have here the normal line at the middle as a basis. So every time that you will work on the refraction, don't forget to include also the normal line in your drawing. So this is your uh, normal line. Alright, so this is the normal line. Okay, so that is the refraction. And in refraction, uh, I know you are familiar with this trick. Alright, so even when you put an object in a... Um, in a glass of water, that particular object seems to be bent. Okay? But it's not. It is only an illusion. Alright? It is only an illusion and that's how the light is being distorted before entering our eyes. Okay? That's how light being distorted inside the water. Okay? So, that makes it good. Uh, that makes it look like that the object seems to be uh, bent. Okay? So, I have right here a video coming from Mel Chemistry. Okay. You can visit their uh, channel uh, in the description below. Alright, so, okay, in their video, so is there a way, alright, is there a way that we can hide an object, okay, using refraction? Okay, so I repeat the question. So the question is, is there a way, okay, when, uh, where we can hide an object using refraction? Alright, so let's uh, watch this one. Alright, so as you can see, the glass rod disappeared com completely. So, what is this material? Alright, what is this material in which the glass rod is being submerged? Alright. Alright, so the material was oil. Alright. Alright, so I'll uh, you just pull, uh, you can pause the video if you want to. Okay, so what do you think? Alright, so what do you think is the reason why the glass rod is uh, the glass rod disappeared once it is submerged in oil? Alright, as you can see here, the water when you submerge a glass rod in the water, it it, uh, it looks like it is uh, enlarged. Alright. So it, uh, it looks like it is uh, distorted. While when you put it on the oil, when you put the glass rod on the oil, it looks like it, uh, it becomes invisible. Alright? So how does it happen? Okay, what do you think? Okay, what is your guess? What is your hypothesis on that? Okay, so uh, this is the answer. Alright, so as you can see, uh, the oil and glass have similar refractive indices. Okay, so let's assume that the glass is 1.5. Alright, so the glass is uh, approximately 1.5 in terms of uh, index of refraction. Okay, so the oil also should be, okay, it can be a 1.5 uh, index of refraction as well. So if an object, uh, if two objects, Alright, so if two objects have similar index of refraction, it tends to create some uh, invisible uh, phenomenon. Alright, 
So, an object which is submerged to another object which has a similar refractive indices will render the object uh, invisible. Alright? To the naked eye. Okay? So, that's how this glass and oil work. Yeah. Alright? You can try that one at home as well. Okay? So, you can have your cooking oil and any glass object that you have at home. Alright, so as you can see that the light passes through this oil remains undistorted. Okay, because of the similarity in the refractive indices. Alright, so this is the okay, this is the video coming from Mel Chemistry. So go uh, to the description below and try to find out so, uh, some more videos about chemistry from their uh, channel. Alright, so materials with higher index of refraction, so materials with higher index of refraction bend the light at a larger angle. Okay, so always take note of that one. Next is the refraction occurs when light rays, always take note, if the two materials have two different index of refraction. So always take note that one. Okay, and these are the materials. Alright, these are certain materials where, uh, where you can find, okay, certain uh, index of refraction, alright, and you can use this one uh, to bend light, okay. So, being the largest is the diamond and being the lowest among the index of refraction is the uh, air, alright. So, give, we have the vacuum that is given, alright. So, air, almost similar to the vacuum and as we have uh, the water, ice, and glass, the speed of light inside these materials decreases, all right? So, so the speed of light of this, uh, in this material decreases. All right, so um, basically the light ray uh, that is going from lower index of refraction into higher index bends towards the normal line. Alright, so it is better to uh, show this one to you in a simulation. Alright, so let's have here uh, the, si the simulation. Okay, so let's start first with uh, the idea that the light will come from higher index of refraction to an object or material that has lower index of refraction. For example, the material will have... Uh, will come from uh, glass and it will exit from the glass to the air. Alright, so it will exit from uh, to the glass and to the air. So as you can see here, guys, as you can see here, uh, everyone, so as you can see here, the glass, okay. Alright, so the glass uh, allows the light to escape on it and it moves through the air. So as you can see here, glass has higher index of refraction than air. So what happens is, the angle of ref ref refraction that you have right here, the angle of refraction is moving away from the normal line. The one that you have right here. So this is the normal line. So that is the trend here. So from higher index of refraction to lower index of refraction, the line or the angle of refraction moves away from the normal line. Okay, so more so vice versa. If we uh, if we interchange this one, this one will be glass. So as you can see here, from a uh, lower index of refraction, which is the air, and to the higher index of refraction, which is the glass. As you can see, the refraction angle. All right, so the light rays hugs the normal line. Okay, it moves towards the normal line. So compared to have what uh, to, compared to what we have earlier, right? So we have here that the we have here the angle of refraction moving towards the normal line. So basically speaking, as you increase, alright. So as you increase the index of refraction of the material, alright, where the light goes through, it happens that the light rays will, uh, the, or, or rather, the angle of refraction is moving towards the normal line as we increase the index of refraction as we decrease the index of refraction as we decrease it the light rays or the angle of refraction moves away from the normal line okay so that's the basic idea 
Okay, so that's the basic idea of what we have right here. Okay, so next one. Okay, so that is the idea here huh, about the refraction. Refraction is uh, the process of bending of light when it passes through uh, two materials with two different index of refraction. Okay? Alright, so just like the reflection, just like reflection, the refraction also follows certain uh, parameters. This is the Snell's law of refraction. Okay, so what is Snell's law of refraction? The Snell's law of refraction talks about the relationship between angles of incidence and angles of refraction between two materials with two different index of refraction. Okay? So that is the Snell's law of refraction. So this is the relationship between angle of incidence and angle of refraction. And it talks about the... It talks about how this light rays passes from one material to another material with two different index of refraction. Alright, so it is uh, best used with this formula that you have right here. Okay, so the N being the index of refraction. So as you can see here, we have two different materials. Okay, so the N that you have right here, the incident, uh, so the incident light or the incident light ray will come first to the first material, okay, which has different uh, index of refraction with the second material in which the light is being refracted. Alright, so we have here the angle in which the incident light passes through, okay, and uh, this is the angle in which the refracted light goes through a certain material. So that is the Snell's law of uh, refraction. So, okay. So there are some um, there are some um, sample problems that you can have in the in the internet. So you can find out, and then you can use this one whenever you are uh, whenever you are uh, using or doing some sample problems regarding refraction. Okay. All right. So what is total internal reflection? Okay. Total internal reflection is part of refraction. Okay, so the angle of incidence at which light begins to reflect back to the refractive material is called the critical angle. Alright, it is called the critical angle. So, the total internal reflection happens when the angle of refraction becomes greater than the critical angle. So, what is this critical angle? Okay, let's take a look at it in the simulation. Alright. So what is this critical angle? So uh, most familiar uh, form of total internal reflection is on water. Alright? It's on water. So as you can see here, alright, so as you can see here, uh, let's have the water on top. And, uh, alright, so rather the air on top. So that is, uh, uh, rather water, water on top than air below. So just uh, invert it. Alright. So, Suppose that you are underwater, so you are here, underwater. So as you can see here, the angle of refraction, the one that you have at the bottom, right? The one that you have, the, that you have at the bottom, can exceed until, uh, alright, until 88, okay? Once it reaches 90 degrees, or greater than 90 degrees, the tendency is that the light, that comes from the water, all right, the, the light that travels through the water will be reflected back to the water as the critical angle of the refraction, all right, as this uh, critical angle that you have right here, all right, so as the critical angle of the refraction increases, okay, greater than 90 degrees, okay, greater than 90 degrees. So as it increases, it allows the light to go back, all right, to uh, where it came from. So that is why it is called total internal reflection. Alright, so mostly this is happen, um, mostly total internal reflection happens when you dive underwater. Alright, so it happens when you dive underwater and then try to look at the sky above. Alright, when you are here underwater, supposedly you, you are here underwater, and you will try to look at the sky above. Okay? So this is the sky above. Alright. So, if the, if the angle, alright? If the angle of refraction is greater than the critical angle. 
Okay? If the angle of refraction is uh, greater than the critical angle, the tendency is you will not see the sky above when you are underwater. You will not see the sky above. Instead, you will see the water surface inside the water. Alright? So, you can see the water surface inside the water. So, this, this uh, person right here will be able to see this uh, surface of the water underwater. Alright, so that is total internal reflection. Alright, so another example here is diamonds. Okay. Okay, do diamonds really shine? Okay. Do diamonds really shine? Okay. So the answer is no. Okay. Diamonds doesn't shine. It reflects the light inside it. Alright, we call it total internal reflection. This is how it happens. Okay, so this is how uh, diamond uh, sparkles. Alright, so I will put the description or I will put the link of this video below. Alright, if you want to watch it uh, on your own. Okay? Alright, so the reason why diamond shines the way it was, the way, the way that you see here on this video, it's because of one, the way it is cut, and also the reason is total internal reflection. Alright, so the light happens to reflect several times inside the diamond. Alright, so the light reflects inside the diamond several times that makes it look like it glitters. Okay, it looks like it glitters, but it's not. It's only the light that is reflecting inside that makes it glitters, okay? Okay, so the, the, the diamond that you see here, this uh, typical cut of the diamond that you see here, or any diamond, uh, any diamond uh, figure that you see, okay, is cut the way that you have right here. What do you call this cut? Alright, so we called it the brilliant cut. Okay, so we called it the brilliant cut and typically most diamonds are uh, being uh, processed on that uh, kind of uh, cut. It has 57 faces, alright? Those 57 faces allows the light to reflect several times inside your uh, diamond. Alright, so again, the reason why diamond is uh, shines like this one that you have right here is because the light is being reflected several times inside the diamond. Alright, again, diamond doesn't shine, it reflects the light inside. Alright, so... Alright, so that is the diamonds. Okay, so diamonds are very good example of total internal reflection. Alright, another um, another um, part of refraction, but uh, this is a very uh, unique part of refraction. This is dispersion. Okay, this is dispersion. And dispersion happens when, um, when a certain material... Alright, when a certain material suddenly, uh, when the light passes through a certain material and um, distributes, alright, or um, distributes or somehow, uh, uh, what do we have right here? Uh, it distributes, okay? So once the light passes through a certain material like water droplets that you have right here, Okay, it uh, changes that particular light that you have over here into several wavelengths once it passes through that certain material, example the water droplet. Or other example is the prism. It separates the white light to its constituent color. So we all know the rainbow, 
Okay guys, we all know the rainbow has several colors, the Roy Jibib, the seven colors. Alright, that one is possible, the majestic rainbow is possible because light passes through the water droplets and these water droplets that we have, uh, in which your light ray passes through separates this light uh, effectively. Alright, so like that, uh, the one that we have right here on the simulation. Okay, example, uh, we will use a white light and we will use a certain uh, prism. This one is a triangular prism. Okay, so typical uh, shape of a prism. And if we shine a light on that uh, uh, of this prism that you have right here, so as you can see here, alright, so as you can see here, the light is being separated into its constituent color. Alright, so the light is being separated into its uh, constituent color that you have over here. Okay, so red being the less uh, less bent light, and violet will uh, will be the most bent light. Okay, so that is the dispersion. Okay, so this is the price of dispersion. Now there is a certain shape that uh, dispersion is possible. So dispersion also is possible in um, in trapezoids. Okay, the one that we have right here, the rhombus shape that we have over here. Alright, next one. Uh, it is not possible on um, square shaped uh, prism, the one that you have right here. Unless uh, you change its orientation. Okay, also uh, dispersion is uh, slightly possible. Alright. It is uh, slightly possible in uh, circles or spherical uh, prism, like the one that you have right here. Okay? Alright, so this is dispersion. Okay? Now, let's go now to the practical application of uh, the, one that, the one that we are uh, having on this video lesson. Okay, the refraction. Okay, so again, this is the prism and this is the color that's the, the prism. Okay, being produced here. Okay. Alright. So the application that we have right here about the reflection and refraction is the fiber optics. Alright. So in modern uh, internet connectivity, we use now the fiber optics instead of uh, copper wires. Alright. Now copper wires are being less efficient over time. They become less efficient over time in, in transmitting uh, data signals. Okay, that is why it is uh, being replaced now by fiber optics. So what is fiber optics? Fiber optics is a glass rod, all right? It is a glass rod uh, which is uh, okay uh, enclosed in, a, in an insulation, okay, to make a wire. And what happens to the light inside your glass rod? It, tot uh, it reflects several times. Okay, it follows uh, the idea or it follows or the process of total internal reflection. Okay, so it, it reflects several times inside and until it reaches its destination. Alright, so what is the advantage of uh, using light? Okay, what is the advantage of using light in uh, transmitting signals? Okay, the signal doesn't degrade. Alright, the signal doesn't degrade on the other side. Okay, the signal doesn't degrade on the other side. So, uh, whatever shape of the glass rod, right? Whatever shape of the glass fibers that you have right here, it will uh, go through that glass fiber and uh, go to the end point of that uh, glass fiber that we have right there. Okay, so to better demonstrate it, so I have here, uh, we'll show you a video about that one. Okay, about uh, how fiber optics uh, work using total internal reflection. Total internal reflect. Okay, so this is from... Um, okay, so I will put the um, description below. So if you want to watch it on your own, so I, want, I will put the link in the description below of this uh, video. In technology, a lot of communications are done, including telephone and other communications. You may have an optical cable in your home stereo or home theater system that uh, communicates audio information through uh, an optical cable. The principle is uh, total internal reflection. If we come in at a glancing angle, then 
all of the light that's incident on this surface and on this surface will be reflected back internally into the uh, material. So, okay, so as you can see guys, uh, that the light incident light that you have right here coming from this source is being reflected back several times inside this uh, rectangular tube that you have okay so the reason is because uh the layers that you have right here the layers of this uh rectangular glass block that you have right here is um have different index of refraction of the one that is uh outside this rectangular block okay oh. So it works for glancing angles and the, the beam needs to be confined within a material that is more optically dense, has a higher index of refraction than the surrounding material. But any shape will do. You can use a rectangular shape here, you can use a circular shape. All right, so as you can see, even a circular shaped uh, glass rod, that you have right here uh, enables the light to be transmitted from one point to the far end. Okay? Um, confining all that light inside of that fiber. Now, this is a more typical light uh, optical cable or, or light fiber. I'm just going to introduce the, the beam here. You'll see. All right, so this is a typical fiber optic cable that are being used by a telecommunications company. All right, so so when you uh, when you shine a light on one end, all right, and the light will come from the far end. Okay, so that is a uh, optic uh, fiber optic cable. See it come out on the far end. This is an example of uh, we have a source of light in the base here, and each of these all they are strands of uh, plastic and they are channeling the light uh, through. Okay, so this is the okay, aesthetic purposes, all right? Aside from communication purposes of fiber optics, this is an aesthetic purposes of uh, fiber optics, okay? So most of the time, uh, you can see this one as a decorative, uh, decorative uh, object, all right, at home, or even in Christmas trees, something like that or even a um, okay, house in, in your, inside your house, a decorative uh, object, all right? So this is also a fiber optic, but this is not made of glass. This is made up of uh, nylon fibers, okay? So the one that you have right here is made up of nylon fibers. Um, and they can be bent or whatever, and they'll still channel that light. There is a certain radius, if you, if you bend it, if you kink it really hard, then that, uh, brings you away from the total internal reflection and uh, and you lose the effect. All right, so that is uh, the total internal reflection and its application in communication and uh, aesthetic purposes. All right, the fiber optics. Okay, so uh, with that, uh, let's go now to the next uh, topic that we have, which is the virtual and real images. Okay, so Okay, we have uh, the images. So the images are formed, all right? The images are formed based on how the light reflects and refracts, okay? So basic idea of, uh, these are the basic uh, things that you need to take note in optics, okay? Whenever the light interacts, whenever the light interacts with another light ray, sometimes it forms a uh, image and sometimes it's not, all right? So, there are two images that we have right here. The one is virtual and the one is a uh, real image. Okay, so let's find out what is the difference between uh, these two images that we have. Okay, the most common image that we uh, see every day is uh, a virtual image. Okay, so this is a virtual image. Now, what is a virtual image? Light rays, okay, the light rays in virtual image do not actually come together. Okay, so I'll show that one to you later. And those uh, image or the image that is formed in your mirror, especially the flat mirror, the one that you have right here, this is a flat mirror. The image that we see on this flat mirror is uh, created by our eye and brain interaction. 
Alright? So, this is created by the eye and brain integration. Okay? So, how does it work? Okay. So, as you can see here, we have two sides of your mirror. This is behind the mirror. Alright? And uh, this one is in front of the mirror. Okay. So, as you can see here, all the incident ray, okay, passes through the mirror or uh, goes through the mirror, which is being reflected. So, as you can see, it follows the law of reflection. Angle of incidence is equal to the angle of uh, reflection. So, as you can see, all the incident rays are being reflected. So, we have it right here, and we have it over here, and we have it right here as well. Okay, so as you can see, none of the reflected rays, none of the reflected rays come together. So, as you can see, none of the reflected rays intersect with one another. Okay, so if they don't intersect, therefore, there will be no image that is formed. But, um, but, all right, but our eyes, okay, but, but our, uh, our eyes is uh, very tricky, all right? Our eyes and brain is very tricky. It, uh, the eyes, okay, the eyes creates an illusion that the reflected rays comes inside the mirror, okay? Our eyes and our brain tells us that the reflected ray, these reflected rays that you have right here, although they do not meet on the front of the mirror, none of the reflected rays uh, meet in front of the mirror, the eyes and brain thought that this light rays comes from behind the mirror. Alright? And also, not only it comes from behind the mirror, those light rays that we have right here, these reflected rays, according to our brain, it merge, alright? So it combines or it comes together behind the mirror. So that is why the image is located. It looks like located be behind the mirror, but there's no behind me. There's nothing behind the mirror. Okay? There's nothing behind the mirror. Okay? So now, if the object is here, all right? So if the object is here and the image is uh, over here, so the image is different or the position of the images is or position of the image is different from the position of the object. Okay, so that is why it is called virtual. Okay, again, the image that is formed is not on the same side of the object. That is virtual image. Alright, so it appears, it appears that the image is formed behind the mirror, but it's not. Okay, there's nothing behind the mirror. Okay, it is uh, only an illusion. Alright, it is only an illusion created by the eye and brain integration. Alright, so eye and brain uh, integration. Okay, so that is the virtual image. And again, uh, virtual image cannot be projected into the screen. Alright, it cannot be projected into the screen. So that is why uh, in a uh, camera technology, none of the camera that we know today uses virtual images. Alright, it uses the next type of image which is called, so this is a product of virtual images. Okay, reflection in the flat mirror. Alright, so camera technology uses real images. Alright, because in real images, you can project it on film or screen. Okay, now what is the difference between real image and virtual image? Now as you can see here, none of the reflected rays are intersecting with one another. Only our eyes and brain tells us that the rays are being uh, joined together behind the mirror. But in real image, there is a part in front of the mirror, alright? So there's a part in front of the mirror, so this is the front, and this is the back of the mirror. Alright, so there is a place in the front of the mirror where the light intersects. Only the reflected rays. Okay, take note. Only the reflect, reflected rays. So, this is an incident ray. Alright? So, the reflected rays intersect with one another on this point. So, that is why you have your real image here. Okay? Now, what is the characteristics of the uh, real image? As you can see here, as you can see here, the real image is upside down. Okay? So, the real image is upside down. Okay? So, and aside from that, and aside from that, the image is formed as the same side of the mirror. So the image is formed the same side. So if the object is placed on front, 
the tendency is in a real image, all right, in the real image, the image will be formed on the same side of the object. Okay, the one that you have right here. So that is why, okay, that is why real images, all right, are formed when light rays actually meet at the point after give, being reflected, the one that you have over here, or refracted from a mirror or lens. Okay, so that is the real image. Alright, by the way, I forgot to tell uh, earlier, tell you earlier, that the virtual image is always upright. Alright? Virtual image is always upright. There's no virtual image that is upside down. Okay? Whereas, real images are always upside down. There are no real image that are upright. Okay? So, that is the difference between real image and uh, virtual image. Okay, so the one that you have right here are real images and uh, virtual images. So I will show you something. Um, this is a device called uh, Miroscope. Alright, so this is a device called Miroscope, and uh, I want you to, I, don't know, I want you to, I want you to analyze this one if this one is a virtual or a real image. Alright, so the one that you have right here, the Miroscope. Okay. All right, so as you can see here, the object cannot be picked by the tweezer that you have right here. So as you can see, the object is uh, being, uh, being picked from the inside of this object. All right, so what is inside this object? Right. Inside this object is uh, a mirror where the object is seated inside. Okay. There is a mirror and it bounces off light inside. It bounces off the light inside the mirror, the one that you have right here. So that is why you see a real image. That is a real image. The virtual image is inside the mirror. Alright. The virtual image is inside the mirror. Okay. The one that is projected to you, like the one that you have right here, the one that is uh, projected to you the uh, over here, is a real image. Alright? So, it is a real image coming from the image inside the mirror. Okay? Inside this uh, device that we have right here called the Miroscope. Okay? So, I'll put it in the link. Uh, in the link. I put the link in the, and I will put the link in the description below. All right, where we, where you can uh, buy one of these. All right, so that is the Miroscope. Okay. All right, so application, application time. All right, so in uh, recording images, okay, in recording images, very important. Okay, very important in recording images is. Uh, the virtual and then the real images that we have uh, earlier okay so in our modern uh, technology that we have okay so before we used to record image in uh, an ink or a film okay so we have here a negative right so the disadvantage of using a negative is uh, when it is exposed to light the tendency is the negative is uh, will render be useless okay will render be uh, useless Unlike what we have right now, so we have here the smartphones. We have now the smartphones right now. This technology uses a CCD or a capture capacitor device. Alright? Capture capacitor device. So all digital cameras uses this uh, tiny sensor. Okay? And these tiny sensors are the one that process the image. Okay? It process the image to its uh, certain quality. Okay, the way uh, you took it. Okay, so uh, the images that you have uh, on your photo, not only on the photo, but also on the monitor, okay, on the monitors of your computer or your smartphones are being processed and it contains red light, blue light, and green light. And they are arranged in what they call the pixels, the one that you have right here. Okay, not, uh, they are not few. They are, we have a lot of uh, pixels in a certain image or a certain uh, video, all right? So pixels are very important, okay? The number of pixels, because the number of pixels will dictate 
the quality of the image that you will form. All right. So after being processed, all right, after being processed by uh, your uh, CPU or the CPU found in your smartphone or even in your computer, okay. So it will form now the images using these pixels. So what about uh, what are these pixels? Okay. What are these pixels? So pixels are points in your images. All right, pixels are points in your images. And the total number of pixels that are found in your image, uh, that are found in your image or uh, in your um, monitor, okay, is called res resolution. Okay, again, resolution is the total number of pixels found in your image or monitor. Okay, so we have here a 2 megapixel camera, the, the one that you have right here. Okay, this is a 2 megapixel, but nowadays we have now uh, more than 2 megapixel of camera. So the one that I have right here is a 64 megapixel. So it means that it contains uh, 64, alright, 64 uh, million, alright, it contains 64 million pixels, okay, on a certain image once you use this camera. Okay, some cameras have higher than 64, okay. So how does uh, how do we compute megapixel or how do we compute these uh, two megapixels that we have uh, right there? Okay, so let me show you. Okay, let me show you how it uh, how it is uh, done. All right, so it is done by having this uh, com uh, computation. So most of the time, you will see the resolution of your uh, computer. Most of the time, you will see the resolution of your computer as uh, 1, uh, 280 by uh, 720. All right, so you can see one of these as uh, 720p or this is HD. All right, high definition. Okay, so how do we compute for the 2 megapixel? How does it came to be? Or how it came to be? Okay, so we have here, for example, your screen. Okay, so we have here, example, your screen. Okay, over here. And, okay, on this screen that we have, okay, uh, on this screen that we have, the 1,280 that you have right there is the amount of pixel across your screen. So you will count 1,280 pixels and you will repeat that 1,280 720 times. Alright, so again, okay, 1,280 again and another one, another 1,280 on the next layer over here until you fill this uh, screen with 720p number of pixels. Okay, so that is the 720p. Now, how about the how about the 1080p, which is the full uh, full HD? All right. So, which is the full HD? So, in 1080p, which it uses 1920, which is higher than the previous one, times 1080. So, this is 1080p. This is full HD. All right. So, what what does it mean? It's uh, it's the same thing. You will need to count 1920 pixels and then you will repeat it 10 uh, 1080 times. All right? You will repeat it 1080 times on that uh, particular screen that you have over here. Okay? So, we have uh, we have new technology today. We called it 4K. So we called it 4K. So we have here 3840 by uh, 2160. So this is a 4K uh, resolution, okay? Again, this one is called resolution. This is the total amount of pixel uh, fa found in your uh, image, video, or in your monitor. All right, so there are 4K that are found in cinema, which is uh, 496 by 2160, uh, all right? These are found in cinema, which has... Uh, which has higher screen size, okay? Which has bigger screen size. And these are found in consumer TV, all right? Consumer uh, television, 
Okay? So like LED, something like that. So it contains or it has a 3840 by 2160 uh, resolution. Okay? So, uh, okay. So again, this, uh, this resolution that you have right here is not affected by the screen size. Okay? Or the image quality, rather, is not affected by the screen size. The screen size doesn't dictate the image quality that you have. Instead, the resolution of your monitor or your camera. Alright? The resolution of your camera dictates the quality of the image that that certain device will produce. Okay? Now, since we are talking about pixel here, we have also uh, in, in gaming, alright? In gaming or watching movies, okay, it is very uh, important to also take note the refresh rate of these uh, pixels okay it is also uh, important to take note the refresh rate so and what does the refresh rate means it means that this is the amount of time all right this is the amount of time in which your pixel will change into another color all right so the higher the refresh rate the higher the refresh rate the less uh, the less laggy or the less lag you will see on your uh, image or your videos while it is uh, moving or changes in color or something uh, like that. Okay, so that is the refresh rate. So this is the amount of time needed to refresh the color or refresh the kind of pixels in your image in or video into a certain Another, uh, another pixel into another form of pixel okay so that is the resolution and uh, okay and the uh, refresh rate uh, by the way i forgot uh, where does the two megapixel came from okay so what we have right here so if we compute this one for example if we compute 1280 times 720 we get we get 921 600 pixel Okay, so what does this one mean? This is one megapixel. All right, this is one megapixel. Okay, approximately one megapixel. Now, how about this one? 1920 times 1080. So that is uh, 2073 600 pixel. Okay, so or two megapixel. So this is where the two megapixel came from. Okay, now how about the 4K? So the 4K has 8 megapixel. Alright, so 8 megapixel contains 8 megapixel. Alright, so that's how you compute for the number of pixels on your uh, certain resolution. Okay, so let's uh, go back now. Alright, so this is what happens when you have uh, less pixels on your image. Less pixel may, means uh, less image quality. More pixel means uh, more image uh, quality, higher image quality. All right. Now, there are some technology that are found in your uh, computer, which is the setting of your computer. We called it the anti-alias. All right. So, the anti-alias. So, what does the anti-alias uh, do? Okay. The anti-alias... Uh, Repairs the images, especially if you have uh, jagged images that you have right here. It repairs the image so that it will not look like pixelated. So from jagged, okay, the one that you have right here, from jagged, it can it can make the pixelated image to form certain curves that you have right here or certain straight line instead of a jagged line over here. Okay, that is what anti-alias technology uh, do on your image. All right. So with that. Alright, so with that one guys, so that is uh, the recording, okay? So that is the recording. Okay, so in the future, okay, in the future, so uh, I think now they are developing a certain device. I think now uh, they are developing certain device that can help those people who are blind. There are already devices that helps people which has color blindness, okay? So these devices enables the people to see the color that they uh, didn't see for a longer period of time because of color blindness okay so if color blindness can be treated by such device 
I believe that in the future, there will be some devices that can be attached to the retina, like some form of electrodes, and it can help those people who are blind. Okay, it can help those people who are blind and help them to be able to see them or see the environment or see the surrounding once again. Okay, because of the technology. So, okay, so they are still developing this one, but uh, hopefully in the future, they can have this uh, technology uh, to our uh, patients who are blind. Okay, so with that, Alright guys, so that ends up our uh, video lesson. So it's a lengthy one. Alright, so it's a lengthy lesson that we have right here about reflection, refraction, virtual, and uh, real images. So if you uh, learned something from this uh, video lesson, just hit the like button and uh, hit the subscribe button uh, to my channel and notification bell to uh, update you to more upcoming videos about uh, science and other uh, stuffs, okay, related to science. Okay, so if you have a suggestion and comments on this video, please uh, write it on the comment section below this uh, video. And with that, let's see each other once again and peace out. Mother,